Sigo cruzando ríos, andando selvas, amando el sol, cada día sigo secando espinas de lo profundo del corazón. En la noche sigo encendiendo sueños para limpiar con el humo sagrado cada recuerdo. Cuando escriba tu nombre en la arena blanca con fondo azul, cuando mire el cielo en una forma cruel de una nube gris, aparezcas tú. Una tarde suba a la alta loma, mira el pasado, sabrás que no te he olvidado. Hello, so I'm Annie Lynn, a senior here at York School. And I'm Maddie Gill, she her, also a senior here at York School. And today we're going to be talking about our Global Scholars projects for this year. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of unpack what we're doing, so essentially proposing courses and the rationale as to why we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I can go first. So this year I'm hoping to propose an introduction to social justice course at York. Um, I'm hoping it'll be a year-long elective. Um, so I first became, became passionate about social justice kind of in early high school. Um, my mom introduced me to books about race and our criminal justice system, and I really became passionate about the issue of mass incarceration in our society and how it's derived from the institution of slavery. Um, I read books like Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, and I actually went to go see the movie. Um, and another good book that I read was The New Jim Crow um, by Michelle Alexander. Um, and I really just learned about the ways in which our system criminalize people of color, but especially black and brown people, and its effect on society, and how it's connected to our history in the United States. And one thing that I kept wondering while learning um, about like these topics is, why did I never learn about this in school? And I think that's a question that we've asked yeah. ourselves throughout our high school experiences. Why haven't we gotten more education about important issues in high school? Um, anyway, so... Um, It really incited my passion for change, um, both in the U.S. and in the world. Um, and I currently hope to be a criminal justice lawyer, just like Brian Stevenson, um, who wrote Just Mercy. Yeah, so for the class itself, um, I actually took an introduction to a social justice course at MPC the summer of my freshman year. Um, it was right when the pandemic was starting, so I didn't have a ton to do. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm really passionate about this, and why not sign up for this course? Um, and it really opened my eyes to the ways in which society works and the institutions within society. Um, and I really, I learned this like foundation to social justice education, like key terms um, and ways in which people with different identities are oppressed in a society like the U.S. and Canada. Um, also another important term that I learned was like intersectionality um, and how different aspects of people as, uh, people's identities intersect and affect their experiences within society. Um, and then the curriculum kind of moved on to social movements and what they've been, like evolved into today. Um, And I was really grateful for taking that course because it really opened my eyes um, to something that I've never learned about before. And it provided a great foundation to talking about issues within the US currently and historically. Um, so for ideas in which I'm hoping that this course will entail at York um, is Um, having this book called Is Everyone Really Equal? Um, it's by Robin D'Angelo and Oslam Sensoy, and it's a book that I read in that Intro to Social Justice class at MPC. Um, and it's really just a good foundation for someone that hasn't really learned about social justice before. Um, it has 
social justice terminology describes the mechanics of oppression, prejudice, and discrimination in society. And it also, I feel that it caters to um, not only people that are aware of discrimination and oppression, but also people that aren't as aware. Um, it really kind of caters to everyone. And, um, but I want to look online and consult different teachers and look at some different social justice courses for some good resources. Um, and I want it to be multidisciplinary, so I don't want it to just be reading books, but also maybe podcasts, songs, and art. Um, and then I was thinking that um, the course could kind of move on to social movements within the United States um, and apply this new terminology and knowledge and group discussions and analysis. Um, but then like the US isn't really the center of everything, so I wanted to push it to a global perspective, which is something that I didn't get in the MPC course that I took. Um, global social movements, how do they compare to social movements in the US? And really asking that question is what makes a successful social movement, um, both locally and globally. And then I was thinking to possibly branch out into group and individual projects with different forms of media, um, maybe have an aspect that ties into service learning about something that a student is passionate about, um, and kind of research the history behind the movement and modern day um, in a way with using different kinds of media, depending on what the student is passionate about. And then a part that I was kind of debating was to have like a presentation to the class or maybe to the school as like a final project. Um, so yeah, that's my kind of basic idea of what I would want in this course. I don't know, I think that like, we both giggled, but the question of why haven't we learned this is really like at the core of it all and can definitely go into an in-depth conversation. There's just so much there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And something that, especially what I was thinking in my freshman year was that we actually had a required Latin course for every student. Like every student at York had to take one year of Latin. And I was learning about social justice. I was like, I okay. feel like it should be required for all students to learn about this. And it's really important. And it, it kind of makes students look into the mechanics of society and at, think about those uncomfortable topics. And just because it's like social justice and not, you know, a super common course in high school doesn't mean that it shouldn't be taught. And it's a lot of work to develop a curriculum, but at the same time, like, it's really just like an investment in like social awareness and yeah. bringing people into the conversation. Yeah. Okay, well, I would take it next year if I wasn't a senior. <laughs> um, this is Maddie again. For my project, I am kind of looking at the intersection between art and power, so we call it art, colon, the power it holds, very ominous. Um, so my kind of idea started when I studied abroad, that's a pretty, I think that's like a constant requirement for global scholars yes. for the most part, um, and I chose to go to Paris, and in that time I visited like 14 different museums, went to almost all of the different Ooh. districts in the city, um, and kind of, you know, my love for art had kind of been awoken during my time there. Um, but there was a really powerful exhibit um, at the Palais de la Porte Dore, so um, the Immigration Museum for the country of France, um, called C called, sorry, Ce qui s'oublie et ce qui reste, or what's forgotten and what's remain, what remains. And it looked at um, colonialism and how it had affected a variety of different cultures. So people came together 
artists, of course, from all across the African diaspora. And there was like this rich celebration and sharing of like art, recipes, generational teachings, um, languages, and how we can sustain those. And the role that technology at this point in time is playing in continuing them. And this is not something that I'd ever really seen before. And I think the art world is a really stuffy place and there's a lot of like conventions and air quotes. Um, so it was really refreshing to be exposed to art that was a little bit more meaningful than just, oh, this is a famous painting sitting in a museum. Um, and that has like this intergenerational um, kind of understanding of the world around us. So since then I've been, I've taken nearly all of the Global Scholars electives and I've taken most of the art classes offered here. Um, but unfortunately art history is not an option, um, which has been a little bit disappointing to me. And while I was thinking about it, it's like the AP art history, yes, there's value in it, but also like it's not necessarily anything novel. And I think that if we're taking the time for a teacher to learn a new curriculum, like we might as well really focus on that interdisciplinary aspect of things and um, look at all the, the different social factors that affect how art is made. So not entirely sure if this would be a semester or a year long course, um, but my idea is to kind of pop around the world. So. I've been doing research on a few different exhibits, which I can share. Um, Tufts University is hosting like a decolonial atlas and its strategies in contemporary art of the Americas. And it looks at the different ways um, that art is like really making powerful statements. Um, so looking at like indigenous peoples and of the Americas and challenging our perceptions of like how um, we understand them, talking about how time is not as like perfect in a little timeline as we've kind of been conditioned to believe. And the Western interpretation is very linear when in reality, like the world is so much bigger than us. Um, and then also kind of looking at extractivism and how um, colonialism and other injustices have really destroyed our planet. Um, I know it talks about like looking at the US and the Suez Canal. Um, and within all of this, it just creates like this really beautiful history immortalized in art. Um, maybe I have to be like the podcasters now, but we might have to put pictures in the, <laughs> I'll drop pictures in the description below. Um, in Asian history, my final project was focused on contemporary Asian art. And again, saw some really neat artists. And I think that um, the Yan and Asia Society Museum Director, Boon Hui Tan, um, explained like this so beautifully that the notion of art for art's sake never took hold in the region, referring to um, really the continent of Asia. Instead, the societal purpose of art and the relationship between the art object and the context of its production have been marked a feature in Southeast Asian modern and contemporary art. Um, so in researching individual artists, one of my favorites was Christine I. Tway, um, from Indonesia, and she grew up under an authoritarian regime. So all of her work kind of, you know, questions the human condition and explores these really like philosophical and psychological questions. Um, another artist that I loved is Ni Le from Myanmar, and she, I mean content warning for violence, but when she was young, again, survived a decade-long civil war in Myanmar, and like death was just such kind of a normalized thing being in that 
So she's looking at like the coup and her adolescence and the like country of Myanmar, now Myanmar, not Burma. Um, and she like overlays a lot of different mixed media to capture that shift. Um, and Paris, I also saw a very much contemporary installation um, called A World in Repair. And it's looking at the climate crisis and um, the way that not just the French, but really people across the world are rising up against it and, um, you know, advocating for ourselves. And it's it's pretty incredible. It was in the Swamp Catra, which is like a giant, I don't know, like breezeway almost. And you walk in and you see these like very graphic images of fish with X's over their eyes, like various things, um, kind of exploring animal agriculture, tsunamis just destroying ships. Um, there's one photo or one like image of someone literally shooting themselves in the foot and then everything's in black and white. And I thought that that was like, I mean, terrifying. That's something I'm very passionate about. But at the same time, you get to the end of the exhibit, you turn around and you see like all the good on the other side of things and everything is like neon colors. And we see a world where we break down a lot of the like systems which allow people a lot of power institutions systems whatever it may be whether it be like capitalism um racism really all of these different kind of areas and i think that that's been really important for me in grappling with like we can't understand art and i don't think you can teach an art history course without teaching the rationale behind it um, because art is a subject, or art is a product of where it's made. Um, and yeah, so basic idea is we jump around the world, focus on uh, Africa and the various regions, um, because obviously there's a really like devastating history of a lot of colonization. Um, and at least for me and my experience really only started to see the French side of things. Um, Central and Southern America, as I mentioned, but also indigenous art in like, the Arctic and present day United States. Um, I've done a lot of looking at Southeast Asia, but again, the entire continent. And I think my focus is contemporary. Like I want this to be a course where people can apply it to their day-to-day -day life and it's not just a bunch of old dead white guys <laughs> that are there. All right. <laughs> I think that is such a cool idea for a course and it's so powerful um, because it's like highlighting the voices of the underrepresented, like upper underrepresented and oppressed people. And it also is like a statement of I mean, the art is like a form of resistance yeah. and it's a statement to like what is going on in that time, in that place. Um, and I just think that is so beautiful. Can we like teach these courses concurrently? Or the, the prereq for <laughs> Art and Power is Intro to Social Justice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> again, I think just the idea of like totally integrating this into our curriculum. Um, I have a quick question for you, maybe mm. two, but how do you see like the foundation of social justice really enhancing the other areas of your education? And obviously your experiences are relatively unique in having actually taken a social justice course. Like how does that affect the rest of what you're doing at York? I mean, I feel like taking a course like that, it affects everything. Um, something that I especially, like that opened my eyes is that 
discrimination, um, racism, just like forms of oppression are everywhere within society. And even something like math or like science that you think isn't super related to like social justice or issues within society, like it is, (laughs) it is. Um, When certain groups of people are being oppressed and certain groups of people benefit from that oppression, Um, It really applies to everything within society. It has completely altered my view of the world and where I live. And it really just, it helps me have this extra, you know, background information of society when I'm learning about history or we're talking about books in English. And it's really just important for every human being to learn, not even just me as a York student. Yeah. Okay, and I have some questions for you. I have a lot. So, <laughs> no, it's just notes. It's just notes. But um, I thought it was super cool how you were inspired by museums in Paris and these museums, like, acknowledging um, these topics that you want to cover. And do you think that, like, in society, like, the society of Paris, like, did people actually talk about these issues and talk about history? No, and that's why it's wildly Mm -hmm. ironic, um, because there's, you can't really, like, mention race in France. There's this, like, it's kind of embedded in um, their constitution, and it's this very weird, like, colorblindness, but Mm. also just, like maybe apathy towards truly uncovering that history. And I think it's kind of scary that it's so difficult to get to these conversations. Um, But I think really all of Europe has a long way to go in that regard. I found that experience to be I found that um, to be my experience when visiting Spain. It was actually it wasn't really colorblindness, it was just more pure racism. Um, and if you think of Spain, literally is colonized everywhere, oppressed a bunch of different indigenous groups. Um, we were even taken to a museum that had caricatures of people of color. And it, all the white people looked beautiful, lifelike, um, and all the people of color had these like exaggerated expressions and just, It was really racist there, and I found that, and um, the program leaders I talked to about this were like, no one speaks about race and oppression um, here. Like, no one talks about it at all. So that's why I was like wondering if they do in Paris as well. When you've colonized half the world, you don't have the choice to just disregard it entirely, and I think America, in a lot of ways, is guilty. In yeah, the same ways, um, and yeah, just a lot. I I don't know how much more we have time for, but I have a really philosophical question. Um, this is a little bit of a heavy topic, and like exploring social justice, there's a lot of like really prominent and incredible leaders, and there's a lot of good that's come out of like social movements as a whole, but. Obviously, so much of it is rooted um, in like oppression. And do you have hope for, you know, kind of the future for a generation? And how are you grappling with things? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really tough question. Um, I think as a young person in general, I kind of I look at the U.S. and it's there's not a lot of hope in me, but also because of the lack of hope for where things currently are i want to dedicate my life to changing the systems that's why i want to be a criminal justice lawyer i'm not just gonna see where things are currently and do nothing about it and that's why i am not gonna give up on the united states um do i like where things currently are i mean just in general especially with like abortion bans and It's just a little crazy right now, children dying. Um, It's it's really hard to kind of look at the US and have hope, but I think that incites this fire within young people to make change. Definitely. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, 
my plan moving forward is I still want to go into government. I've realized that politics is a very, very evil thing. Um, and instead, I'm thinking like more about like the climate crisis and people yeah. in a greater scale and the ways in which like we enact policy. A lot of them are again upholding these systemic injustices. So again, kind of dedicating myself to equitable um, public policy and meeting people where they're at in their communities instead of just totally overriding. It's like our, our test question with the um, moving the seashore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. With that, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you both so much. And when can I sign up for your courses on social and criminal justice and the power of art as resistance? Wow, um, I am so inspired. Your discussion was thought provoking. You both expressed candidly how we can actively work to decolonize curriculum and methods of study from art history and sociology, government, history, math and science, including the ways in which we define, value, and apply the learning from the disciplines themselves. As you mentioned, Maddie and Annie, um, this can involve centering the voices and perspectives of artists, writers, activists, to name a few, from historically marginalized communities, expanding the canon to include works from around the world, and reevaluating the criteria by which we judge and assess merit. In Maddie's course, uh, for example, decolonial art history is an approach to the study and interpretation of art that seeks to challenge and deconstruct the Eurocentric biases that have dominated the field for centuries. It recognizes that history or art history has been shaped by colonialism imperialism, and other forms of domination, and that these histories continue to impact the way art is studied, exhibited, and valued today. I especially appreciate your discussion, both of your discussions, of how social justice is a powerful framework that can provide a strong foundation for studying the humanities, for studying law, criminal justice. Annie, as you affirm, Using social justice as a foundation for the study of any discipline is paramount in today's world, now more so than ever, and I couldn't agree more. Making reparations in a lens of social justice intertwines your proposed courses perfectly. By examining human experience and expression through a social justice lens, we can gain insight into the ways in which social power structures shape our lives and our world. This can help us work towards creating a more just and equitable society for all. Thank you both for your keen awareness, depth of perspectives, and zeal for transformative education. Your work reminds me of a term called radical hope, coined by philosopher Jonathan Lear, that refers to a type of hope that is rooted in the belief that change is possible, even in the most difficult of circumstances, and that we can make progress towards a more just and equitable world through persistent effort and collective action. Thank you both. We're now going to segue to our next series with Kieran and Ryan. Yo te llevo dentro hasta la raíz Y por más que crezca vas a estar aquí Aunque yo me oculte tras la montaña Y encuentro un campo lleno de caña No habrá manera, mira yo de luna que tú te vayas